9th of January 2008, 22-year-old Sophie Kate Elliott was stabbed to death by ex-boyfriend Clayton Robert Witherston in Dunedin, New Zealand. The crime and trial were covered extensively in the news media and contributed to the government abolishing the partial defence of provocation in cases of murder. Elliot and Weatherston had a romantic relationship which lasted around six months and ended before her death. In court, witnesses described the relationship as troubled. Weatherston had been an economics lecturer at the University of Otago and also taught Elliot, who completed an honours degree in economics. On the day she died, she was packing to relocate to Wellington the next day and start a job at the New Zealand Treasury at around 12.30pm on the 9th of January 2008. Sophie Elliot and her mother, Leslie, were at the family home in the suburb of Ravensburn, northeast of the city centre, when Weatherston arrived unannounced, saying he had a farewell present. A short time later, Leslie heard her daughter screaming. A New Zealand police officer, Constable John Cunningham, responding to a 111 call from Leslie found Weatherston locked in Sophie's bedroom. When asked what he had done, he told the officer, I killed her. He was then arrested and taken into custody. Forensic pathologist Martin Sage performed the autopsy the next day and found Elliot died from blood loss. Two wounds pierced her heart and one lung, with her wounds to her neck and throat severing the main artery and the major vein. In total she received 216 separate injuries mostly stab wounds from a knife blade, with some inflicted by scissors. Additionally, there were seven blunt force injuries. The pathologist found some defensive wounds and that the attack targeted aspects of beauty and was intended to disfigure. At the end of a week-long deposition hearing during May 2008, and in an Edna High Court, Weatherston pleaded not guilty and was committed for trial by two justices of the peace. The trial moved to the Christchurch High Court for suppressed treasons and was scheduled to start on 22nd of June 2009. Wellerston was represented by Judith Applet Kerr, UC, who argued a defence of provocation. The knife used in the attack came from Wellerston's kitchen. The defence stated he carried it concealed all the time for self-defence. A psychiatrist also appeared for defence, stating he had narcissistic personality disorder. After a five week trial, the jury returned a verdict of guilty on 22nd of July, and on 15th of September, Justice Judith Porter sentenced Weatherston to life imprisonment with a minimum non parole period of 18 years, saying she believed the killing was deliberate and controlled. The news media in November 2009 revealed that the victim impact statement of Sophie Elliott's father had been censored at the request of the judge, preventing him from addressing some of the claims Weatherston made during the trial. On 13th October 2009, Weatherston's lawyers filed an appeal claiming there was a lynch mob mentality over his actions. On 7th of April 2011, Weatherston's lawyer, Robert Lascaux QC, appealed the 2009 verdict before the Court of Appeal on seven grounds, including that Weatherston did not receive a fair trial due to widespread media coverage, with a magazine, Listener, attacking the provocation defence. Lithgow also argued the comments made by Law Commission Deputy President Warren Young unduly influenced the Christchurch jury. 
and challenged the use of photographs of the wounds Wellston inflicted on Elia as exhibits. Crown Prosecutor Cameron Mander opposed these arguments, pointing out that the jury had been directed to ignore media coverage of the case and that Young's attack on provocation could not be linked specifically to the Elliot murder. Elliot's parents and Sensible Sentencing Trust spokesman Gareth McVicker also criticised the appeal. Three Court of Appeal judges reviewed the 2009 trial and verdict on the 17th of June 2011, denied the appeal on all seven grounds. They said that Judge Porter had directed the jury sufficiently to ignore media coverage and the use of photographs did not determine the trial's fairness. Wellston sought leave of the Supreme Court to appeal the Court of Appeal's denial, but have rejected this on the 13th of September 2011. On the 6th of October 2010, the Sophie Elliott Foundation was launched. The aim of the foundation is to warn and educate young women of the signs of an abusive relationship. One of the trustees is Kristen Dunn Powell, who suffered abuse at the hands of high profile sports presenter Tony Feach. The foundation's main aim is to raise money to fund a nationwide primary prevention program and to support local community initiatives which align with the foundation on the 10th of June 2011. Elliot's parents launched the book Sophie Elliot A Mother's Story of a Family's Lost in a Quest for Change to present our side of the story while we're warning young women of the dangers of domestic violence. In 2013, the Foundation partnered up with New Zealand Police and Ministry of Social Development to develop a one-day workshop for year 12 students named Loves Me Not to educate students on healthy relationships and prevent abusive relationships. In 2019, Elliot's mother, Leslie Elliot, closed the foundation, stating that her Parkinson's disease prevented her from continuing to run the foundation and that she did not want another person controlling her daughter's image. Thank you for listening to my first video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing. Thank you.